Hello. So today I want to talk about camera bags, and in particular, I'm looking for a new camera bag. Uh, in particular, for my Canon R5 and 5D Mark IV Canon setup that I use every day in my life as a professional photographer. I'm looking for something that will do for most things, probably a backpack that will do for most things, that enables me to take my laptop with me, that enables me to cover most different assignments. If I need something in particular in terms of a, a specific bag for something different, then I can cross that bridge when I come to it, but I'm looking for an everyday camera bag. I haven't bought one for a long time. It's not strictly true, I'll come to that in a minute. But I thought that rather than kind of finding a bag and then professing to have found the most perfect camera bag in the world and talking about all of its features, I thought what I would do is talk through all of the different camera bags I've used over the last 30 years in my life as a professional photographer. I've still got most of them. Talk to you about what's good about them, what's bad about them, um, what could be improved, how I've used them and then go on to talk about what would make my most perfect bag and hopefully you might be able to give me a suggestion in the comments. You might be able to let me know your thoughts and you might be able to let me know what bag that you think I should be looking at or potentially look at for my next camera bag. So to begin with this is my very first camera bag. Now I've had this for 33 years I believe, something like that, and I think I got it at a jumble sale if I remember rightly. This is like a old school, this is the sort of thing that your great uncle would have had who was a bit keen on photography. And it's a classic camera bag, um, too boxy for everyday use in my opinion. I carried this around with me for a long time. Too boxy, sort of bouncing around on your shoulder, uh, but ultimately it kind of did the job. I don't, I have no idea what's inside, I've just dragged this out of the attic. There's a load of old stuff in here, look, we've got all sorts of different things. Good Lord, there's literally all sorts of different things. Oh, what's that? Wow. A Nikon Corpix S2. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I sort of inherit stuff like this from different people over the years. Look at that. A Pocket Wizard. Anyone remember those? Pocket Wizard transmitter. Old Nokia mobile phone. Some old chargers. How interesting. And I don't know, what, oh look at this. A Yashica G5 <laughs> SLR film camera with this lovely lens hood. Look at that, I genuinely don't know where this came from. Still works. <laughs> Sounds great, the Hanimex lens. We'll have to explore that. Anyway, onwards. This is my very first camera bag. Let's put all of this um, over here. So that was my very first bag. It was always a struggle because it bounced around on my hip with when it was full of camera equipment. Never really liked it. Okay, so where did I go after that? Well, Billingham 550. Now, this is one of my all-time favourites. I've been around the world with this several times. My parents bought it for me when I started my very first started my business. Good Lord, too many years ago to mention. And this was my camera bag for the longest time. I used to carry two EOS One film cameras and a bunch of different L lenses in it and have both of these big old side pockets full up with Fujifilm. Um, absolutely great in so many different ways. Incredible protection um, and quite kind of chasm-like inside. Quite dark inside, which is always a problem for me so you can never actually find things that easily. Um, and I love everything about this. I suppose the thing, the two things that I didn't like about it were that it's very, you know, it's very conspicuous, it kind of sticks out as a camera bag, sticks out as something that might be quite valuable. And also when it's full of gear, these things are heavy and big. And I think this camera bag was kind of the, you probably can't see it there, that was one of the reasons why I started having bag, back problems, to be perfectly honest, just carrying too much kit all the time. So when we went to digital, this bag kind of got sort of sidelined in favour of rucksacks because I was carrying laptops and things like that as well. Now I went through a bunch of different rucksacks, um, all from Low Pro, and I've got a couple of them around, but they're sort of full of stuff. So this was one that I inherited from my wife, and this was just a basic low pro classic. And this in many ways has been kind of perfect because you could fit, you could fit a DSLR and a few lenses, and it had this great big space in the back for miscellaneous items, let's call it that. 
and I used this for the longest time. I used it until it li until literally the fabric of it started to deteriorate and the zips started to deteriorate. I don't know if the zips, maybe one of the zips just about still works. And it has a big enough interior, but no laptop slot. And it wasn't quite big enough for a two camera setup. And so ultimately the Low Pro Classic got replaced. But actually, in terms of, you know, a really good compromise, this is not, this is kind of good. Kind of good. If this had a little 10% bigger with a laptop slot, and we would be, we would probably be talking a keeper, you know? Right, where did we go after that? Well, we can't talk about camera bags without talking about the Domkey F2. I can't remember when this came along. I bought it for myself as a present for completing some particularly tricky assignment years ago, and I absolutely love it. Now, these things are a bit marmite -y. Some people don't like them. Some people hate them. For me, this is the perfect, simple shoulder bag. It's a bag designed by a photojournalist for a photojournalist, they say, and it's completely right. And the reason that it's so great is that when you've got a couple of lenses in it, it's got this lovely grippy strap, and it just kind of hugs into the side of you and is very discreet, very easy to kind of operate and lovely. I love it. It's my all-time favourite. But at the same time, I completely hate it. There are some things about it that are completely useless. You know, you can't fit all the gear that you need in it. It doesn't have room for a laptop. The spaces inside are just slightly a bit wrong for big lenses. It's not quite big enough to put a camera with a lens in, in it. These things at the front are completely useless. These pockets on the side are quite cool, I suppose, for batteries and stuff like that. And it has these great big lumps of metal on the straps that, you know, if you put a lens in there or a camera and that happens to fall the wrong way, it can do, do, cause all sorts of different damage. But I still love it. I wouldn't change it for the world. And I use it all the time when I need a really kind of simple shoulder bag for things. But it's not an everyday bag to take all of your stuff in for most shoes. At least not for me. Okay, so what came along next? Well, this thing, I suppose, came next. Think Tank Airport Roller. Now, I refer to this as the mothership because it's pretty huge. It's great if you're going on a plane because you can fit all your stuff in it and then it still goes in the overhead locker. It's super strong. I've had this for years and it's been all over the place with me. And there's enough space inside for pretty much everything that you could possibly want. It's kind of, doesn't have a laptop slot, but the laptop can go in the top, if you wish. In many ways, it's absolutely perfect. The thing that doesn't work for me is that I live in a rural location. The roads aren't that good. There's no way of really carrying it apart from with this strap on the top. I mean, you can see how, how many years of use this has had because it's just worn, but it still works fine. So you're relying on the wheels and that's fine if you're in the, in the city or, or in an airport, but as soon as you get somewhere where there's stairs or some rough terrain, it's completely useless. So this has to, this has limited use for me anyway. Next thing. Okay. So this is the think tank change up. Now, I'm a big fan of Think Tank, and I'm a big fan of a company called Snapper Stuff, run by a good friend of mine called Helen in the UK, who supply all of this stuff. And this Think Tank change-up is one of the most intelligent bags that I think there is out there for its specific use, because it has this really quite kind of advanced system of being able to, it's like a crossbreed between a backpack and a lens pouch and a shoulder bag, I guess. And it has this quite sort of complicated strap system, which I've changed it <laughs> myself. I've sort of um, adapted it ever so slightly because normally it would have a the sort of chest harness, which means that it would sit here. I'm sorry if I brushed the microphone. And I particularly bought this in the first place for shooting out helicopters. If you've got door off of a helicopter and you're photographing something, you don't want a bag kind of at your feet or anywhere else. You want the stuff that you need right in front of you. So I bought this for that specific purpose. It goes round your waist as well, so it holds it very securely. And there is enough space inside for all of the lenses that you might need, batteries, other bits and pieces, memory cards. 
and it's actually it's quite spacious and I use it a lot these days for if I'm kind of doing a, let's say a travel feature somewhere where I'm walking around a place for you know for a whole day maybe and I just need to kind of shoot all day and I don't want to be weighing myself burdening myself down with backpacks and stuff then this will be the thing that I will choose. So I've got my beanie on again it's it's brass monkeys in England at the moment and um, you know a few people pass comment about my beanie of how it was unnecessary and videos of this type this keeps my head warm simple um, so think tank change up really cool for its intended purpose but it's not an everyday bag what's next okay so it'd be wrong to make this video without talking about the Amazon rucksack which I made a video about a what's in my camera bag video a few years ago and I used this for a while and in many ways this is kind of a brilliant compromise between all of the different bags and it's cheap they're about 40 quid I think the problem with this rucksack was that the build quality just isn't up to the same as some of the bigger brands so the zips are broken and the actual fabric of the bag is just literally broken down so it doesn't offer very much protection at all now with the R5 camera and the RF lenses, I think they're more fragile than the older school DSLR cameras. In fact, I think they're much more fragile, so it needs a bit more care. So I'm looking for a bag that offers a bit more protection. For a long time, I was quite happy for all of my gear just to kind of roll around because I was quite confident in the DSLR and uh, EF lenses that they just kind of could take a bit of a beating. I don't think that's true of the mirrorless system. So this camera bag's been retired, although it's a gr even the zips are now gunged up and won't work. But this thing was great because it has a mi nice big miscellaneous space in the back for storing anything that you might wish to put in there. Uh, clothing, food, props, any of that stuff. And then it has a nice big space, big-ish space for camera equipment, but it couldn't hold two camera systems, uh, sorry, two body systems with ease you could jam it all in and on occasion i have jammed all sorts of stuff in and when i made the what's in my bag video a year or so ago i was shooting a very specific type of project and this bag was actually perfect for that thing and this is quite close to the perfect everyday bag i guess i just wish it was a bit tougher and i wish that um i guess it was an inch deeper because they've made the space where you put your camera equipment ever so slightly shallow and so if you've got big lenses that's difficult but it does have a laptop slot in the back and what is really lovely about this is it's not too although it's got the backpack uh, straps it's not too heavy it's not they're not too big they don't get in the way too much so it's quite discreet i guess which leads me on to the next bag which is this thing this monster the the tamrac expedition bag which I bought for a specific purpose, which was a shoot that I did on, um, you know, very remote location, lots of hill walking, lots of um, rough environment to deal with. And I bought this and it is absolutely brilliant. Bulletproof almost. Compl I, I don't want to say it's waterproof because maybe it isn't, but I, I didn't ever have to, a problem with it. It's got these rubber seals around all the different um, pockets and it has this big flap that comes up over the zip to keep everything inside so for a hill walking kind of rough uh, assignment somewhere miles away from anywhere where you've got to walk and carry long distance carry a heavy equipment long distances this is great but inside i always found it very very dark very dark in there to find things i always found myself fishing around for stuff dark cameras dark interior not maybe such good eyesight i found that a real challenge but in terms of the protection just awesome and in terms of the build quality this thing will survive armageddon i am sure too big for most use too big there's a laptop slot in the back here but there's not a lot of other space there's these sort of silly side things but as with a lot of bags these silly side things that are sort of there for memory cards or batteries or things like that I don't know how much I trust myself to close that all of the time and things not to fly out so I'd rather kind of I don't know it doesn't quite work for me that much um, and the strap system is really comfortable but big all this padding stuff is big so when you put this on 
That is a lumpy rucksack and you can take out a family of four on the, on the pavement if you're walking along with it just because it's so huge. So not ideal for everyday use, I'm afraid. Right, almost perfect, almost perfect, almost perfect. The Low Pro Fast Pack 450 or something like that. I don't actually remember what this thing is called. Had it for a while. This is one of the sort of new breed of camera bags in many ways that it kind of is a bit of a hybrid and it's got this flap on the side so that you can hook it around on your shoulder and access the camera equipment inside if you wish. That's not for me. I've never really been a fan of that. That just seems like a way of just spilling my camera equipment all over the pavement to me. Not interested. And this side opening flap, whilst very handy, is a bit of a pain to close. So I've used this for, for a couple of years and I've, I get increasingly frustrated with this side opening uh, backpack thing. And I run the risk of losing camera equipment out of the side because I don't close it properly. And then I leave it and then I pick the bag up and gear falls out. It's, you know, it happens, not for me. So I've retired this bag now. It has this great space on the back for putting batteries and things. If I'm being really finickety, it opens too far down. So you open it up to get all your things out. Don't close it properly if you're like me and then things can fall out. However, it does have this really nice space, uh, miscellaneous space, let's call it that in the back for putting other things like lighting or chickens or cans of lager or whatever your heart's desire. It has a great laptop slot in the back and these nice kind of very usable pouches on the side for storing things. And the straps are kind of not too heavy, but comfortable. Comfortable enough to carry it a long distance. That's kind of one of the requirements, really. You need to be able to put one of these things over your shoulder or on your back and walk for three miles, let's say, um, to, get, to, get, to take full advantage of nice light or a vantage point. You need something that's comfortable enough to do that whilst carrying all your, all your kit. So, the last bag <laughs> I bought just the other day. Now, I, <laughs> I panic bought this. I went to a camera shop and the amazing guy showed me a bunch of different camera bags. And I wasn't, I couldn't find one that was kind of, I was ready to buy anything that sort of fitted the bill, the perfect bag. Couldn't find anything. And then we came to this, which was for second hand. And I ended up sort of panic buying it, if I'm honest, because it just was the only thing that kind of would, you know, felt like it was right. And I wanted to do the right thing and buy a camera bag from this guy who'd spent the time showing me all these things. But it was a slight panic buy, so it's not the perfect thing. But I will make full use of it. I haven't really used it enough yet, but I'm using it and we will see how we go. And it is this thing, which is a lump and a half, which is a low pro, pro trekker, I believe. And I mean, look at this. It's a giant, whoops. It's a giant and look, it has these massive expandable things. I can barely see you over the top of it. It has these massive expandable pockets on the side, on both sides, which I love a bit of miscellaneous space to put things. You could almost put, you know, <laughs> there's not a lot you couldn't put in there. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll investigate that concept. And then mesh pockets outside of that, which is really cool. It has a big ass uh, system of carrying you know, the straps, but this thing comes off at the bottom, which is quite appealing to me. So if I'm going on a long expedition somewhere, I could add this waist strap. And the waist strap has this very cool kind of gear pocket in it here, which is kind of a bit quirky, but kind of handy at the same time. Maybe you could put your phone in there or an action camera or a vlogging camera or something. That could be quite cool thinking about it. So it's an adaptable system. And then on the back, we have the ability to put a laptop in there, which is quite cool, I guess. It's actually quite cool because you can just take that out. If you don't need your laptop, take your laptop out and leave it somewhere. And then you've got all this other miscellaneous space for coats or drinks or whatever else you want. It's got all of these straps on the back, which I guess are for putting a tripod or some other thing, then straps on the bottom for maybe putting other tripods. How many tripods do we need? I don't know. I'll probably take some of those off to be perfectly honest because I probably don't need them. And then inside, it's got this, the thing that, the thing that sold it for me 
was just these great big easy to use zips. Look at that. I love it. Easy, easy open, easy close. Enough space in here. It's got these weird things here for putting memory card. I'm never going to put a memory card in there. <laughs> it just feels too vulnerable. I keep my memory cards in a memory card wallet somewhere deeply buried inside here. I don't know what else could you put in there. A pound coin? Who knows? Um, and then it's got a couple of other zips up here. And what's nice is that they've covered the zip so it doesn't scratch the top of your camera, so it hides underneath there. Thought that was quite intelligent. This is a used bag. This is a few years old now, I think, so I got good deal. Um, and it's a bit kind of dinosaur-like in terms of its size. When you look at all the new range of bags, they're all a lot more discreet for the mirrorless system. But actually, using the R5, it's as big as a DSLR with a grip on it, and the lenses are kind of the same size as as DSLR lenses, so there's not really much difference in size. And this thing has got enough space inside to pretty much get everything that I want in here with space left over. And it's nice and light interior, so I can see things. You know, in here it's only sort of half full, and we've got um, R5, 5D Mark IV, 70 to 300, uh, 14 to 35, a couple of flash guns, some triggers, some other bits and pieces, oh, and a 50mm with an adapter on it. That's, you know, that's kind of what I use most of the time with a few other bits and pieces. But this thing does have room in these side pouches to put, you know, we could fit a flash gun easily in there. It just goes in. It might not be the best thing in the world, but it's got space for these things. So I don't think that this is the perfect solution for a camera bag for me. I think it's too big. I think I panic bought, but I'm gonna try it out for a bit. This will be my bag for a bit and we'll see how it goes. I'm really busy at the moment, got assignments all over the place. So we will see how this works out and I'll report back on that. But in the meantime, let me know your thoughts based on everything that I've shown you of what you think would be a good place for me to go to for my next camera bag. We maybe will keep this for a bit and then I'll start looking to add another bag and maybe get rid of some of these because my New Year's resolution is to simplify. This is all too much. This is all, this is 30 years of, of uh, uh, the debris of 30 years of life as a professional photographer. I don't need to carry it all with me anymore. I need to kind of move on and find new ways of making life a little bit simpler. So give me your suggestions. I really hope you've enjoyed watching the video. I hope it hasn't been too kind of disjointed and disconnected, but I think that to look forward, it's always good to look back at the past and to kind of look where you've come from and look at what all the things that you've done and how you can learn from those things and move on. And my bit of advice for today is to be careful not to panic buy a camera bag. Cause it <laughs> Maybe though this will turn out to be perfect. Who knows? You know, when I put this on my back, do you think this is too big? Have I zipped it up? Oh, that would be a tremendous mistake, wouldn't it? Is that too much? Is that okay? Does that look ridiculous? Let me know your thoughts. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.